Welcome back, I'm Herman the Herman. Agent Marsh Morty, signing in. And today we're going to install one power supply here into my brother Martin's computer here. So the power supply I've picked out is by Insignia. It's a pretty common brand for a power supply. Can you zoom in a second? So it's got 400 watt peak ATX power supply. So it's basically a 400 watt power supply. Because the standard in this computer here, which is an hey, Acer sir. Aspire T, it only came with a 300 watt power supply, and a 300 watt power supply is deficient to say the least. I mean, 350 is standard in Asus computers, but in Acer, they cheap out on the power supplies. So that's what we're going to be replacing today with this. So first, you're going to want to remove the two screws right there and there. All right, and then the case of it should just slide off just like that. All right, so we're going to take off this screw here that goes to the frame. Because first we're going to remove the old power supply, so we can pop those out. Don't the drop them, you're going to need these screws. Yeah, a good idea is to have a little container, like a cup or something, and put your screws in that. So, that would be a good idea to keep your screws straight. And, be sure you're not going to take it, don't take out these screws here that are part of the actual power supply. Just take out the screws that are connected to the frame here. Yeah, so you can see it's getting loose, so, as I'm on disconnecting it. So you don't want to just let it fall, otherwise you could break your power supply. Oh wait, actually it is clipped in. Alright, and it looks That's like we've it. got all the screws out. So now, so now you know. it should just pull right out here. Okay, it's just unclipped. And it's a little bit stuck, eh? There we go. So it's popped out fairly easily. You always want to be gentle when handling the power supply. So now you're going to want to remember where each cable went. So we'll start with this one here at the top. So all that you have to do is just, there's a little latch right here. You just push it and then it pops off easy peasy. So got that connection out of the way. Yep. Now there's the main connection here. Once again, a little clasp here. You just push that. All right, so you just got to give an extra pull there. You want to keep it straight out again. So this big bundle of cord here is looped around some cords in there. So I'm just going to pull it out, so that this way we keep our cable straight. And again, always being gentle with it, not to actually snap anything off, because that would be dangerous. And when touching good inside the computer and messing with stuff like that, be sure you stay well grounded, so touch part on your computer. That way, in case you have any AC, electrical, static electricity with you, it's not going to harm your motherboard, which we definitely don't want to do. So. Now this cord here has come out, it's got, uh, let's see, it's got, I think, 24 pins to it. So got, that's the main connection there. Now we have right. a connection to so the DVD drive. So we'll take out this DVD drive. It should just pull right out. Yep. Pops pulls, right off just pulls. like that. So now here, in this case, we've got a little um, twist tie sort of thing system here. It's two balls. Just uh, twist those. And off it goes, and all these cords will come out nicely. And this cord the here last. is the cord that goes to the hard drive. So which cord here. is that? This is That's the hard drive cord. Right here. The power supply to the hard hand. drive. And these pop right out. Straight out, like so. And again, you don't just straight out like that. And now the power supply is disconnected. So it basically looks like a little box like this. And now that it's disconnected, we're going to open up our bigger boy. So, it's so, a really nice case, really. Nice boxing to it. It's by Signa. This cord here is a cord that connects from the wall into the, into the end, which is the power supply. So, we're going to tuck this cord aside here for later use. Now we're going to pull out the actual power supply. All right, so it comes all in a bag. Here's all the cords that come with it. Man, there's a lot of cords. All right, and when picking a power supply, be sure that it's the same size. And as you can see, it is the same size. Size doesn't matter, and the reason that is is because the brackets might not be the same if it's a bigger power supply. So this power supply here does come with a switch, you can see, for on and off. So we're going to switch it to off for now, so that we don't accidentally give it a static charge. <laughs> and the phone just rang. 
Well, now we're gonna wait for the phone to stop ringing. Alright, so now we're just gonna tuck it. So be sure that this, the input, is to, is facing that way when you plug it into your computer. So I'm just gonna tuck it right back in where the old one is. Make sure it gets inside, it's underneath this part before pushing it. And again, just be gentle with it because these are computer parts and you definitely do not want to snap anything. Lift up and push. It's like, here, I think it's stuck. Oh wait, okay. Oh, there we go. All right, and then All it right. just snaps, just, just snaps right in like so. Now we're going to put all the old screws that went to the power supply back into their new slots. That's pretty cool, a little feature having to switch off the back of it. That's kind of cool, actually. It's actually a breaker. So, uh, yeah, that way if it draw, if it's, it's basically a surge feature, protection feature. So this way, if you say your house was hit by lightning and you were using your computer, it would flip the breaker before getting inside your computer and wrecking everything. So it's an awesome safety feature, especially when, if you like to upload during storms, which is kind of a dumb idea. And now you can see that all the cables here are braided, so now we've got to clip all these back into place. So let's begin with the babe connection. We know where that goes. Th this up arrow doesn't actually mean up, it means clips together like this. And then now it's going to clip in. Uh, this um, clip here should be on the left. Because yeah. uh, the clip, the other end of the clip is right there, and it's on the left. So we're gonna try our best here, not to break anything as we clip it in. And it looks like there we go, clipped into place. Got the bottom clipped into place. Good to go. This goes to your hard drive. You can tell by the by the amount of pins here. And you notice that there's this little indentation to the bottom here. This will fit perfectly with this here because this has this little indentation to the right there. So, so now you want this little notch at the top because the little notch right there is at the top. Let's see. Okay, there. Yeah. Be sure to and not it goes match right there. the notch with the top notch on the hard drive. And it goes pretty much right beside this top one. You'll know it's the wrong size if it's a bit too big or a bit too small. But that is, in fact, but the right size. Clips so in. Easy enough. So the four pin here clips into, you'll see a four pin slot. Yeah. So let me shine a light in there. Yeah, I four see pin slot right to it there. Clips in there. Make sure you've got the clip on the right side. And Just match those ends up and it should fit, which it does. And it clips in nicely. That one is right here, Marty. Ah, that's right there. So we're gonna plug this is the drive that's to the CD drive. And be sure end with the little notch. Make sure you check the notches are done right, and you'll know pretty quick if it's the wrong connection because they'll be too big or too small. And that in fact is the right connection, so I've got it plugged in. Yep. Good to go. Alright, all right. so that's all the connections. So I'm gonna quickly run over the connections we did a minute here. So we connected the four pin connector to there. You yeah, might have focus. an eight pin connector, but just be sure it's connected to there, or it might be on a different location. And then this here goes to the CD drive, so that's that one right there. Down here is my graph, no, that's my hard, hard drive. drive, and that's that connection there. And this connection, and we've got a few left over, so this one is for PCI Express, which is going to be a graphics card soon. And this here is if I had a floppy drive, which no, I don't have a floppy drive. This here is for IDE, so that's kind of like fans and stuff like that. So we don't actually have any fans, so these can just all be tucked aside. So we should be good to go. And make sure you don't have any cords sticking into your fan, because eh, that one off good. All right, so I've got my 27 inch monitor plugged in. I've got my Acer keyboard plugged in, my mouse plugged in. So we should be good to actually press in the power button. Oh, and it looks like Houston, we have liftoff. So it looks like all of our connections are right. Great, the boot up, it's booting up and everything. <sighs> come on, come on. Oh, there we go. All right. Okie dokie. All right, so it looks like all the connections are good. It's booted up. So now 
we're probably just gonna, I'm just gonna shut her down, and then I'm going to re, and then I'm going to be doing some cable management, tucking those actually cables behind there, so that it's not looking like a rat's nest, which it is right now. So I'm just gonna shut it down a minute, and I'll plug it from the wall so I don't shock myself or anything like that. And success. So if you guys have any questions about installing a power supply or anything related to technology in general, leave that down in the comment section. Be sure to leave a like before you leave. And if we guys help you out and you guys enjoy what we do, be sure to subscribe as well. I'll be seeing you tomorrow or whenever news breaks. March Marty out.